This is a fan-generated show. If you'd like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our new Rumble channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm thrilled to announce the release of my new book, Obama's True Legacy, How He Transformed America. There's a reason why Mike Huckabee calls it a ferocious and chilling read. Order it now at Amazon.com or at FrontPageMag.com. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, another fantastic program with another fantastic guest. But as always, just a few in-house matters, ladies and gentlemen. As always, we are under assault by the deep state in terms of censorship and some other things. We're a fan-generated program, so we just want to remind you, if you like what we do, if you're interested in what we do, please support the show. At the least, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our Rumble channel. Visit us at jamieglazoff.com. If you have a little bit of extra money, send it our way. We're fan generated. If you know any wealthy friends, give them a little nudge. Follow me on Twitter. And of course, follow liveuptofreedom.com. That's where Annie Cyrus is waging a very important battle on the front lines. And now another great hero that is waging a battle for the truth and for freedom on the front lines. What an honor. Barack Lurie, the author of Keeping the Kids All Right, and there's another million great things to say about him. Barack, welcome to the program. Jamie, thanks a lot for having me. It is uh, really an honor, and I, I cannot uh, echo more what you just said about how important it is to help contribute to your program. Uh, you are getting a voice out there that I don't think a lot of people hear. Uh, you have an analysis that I think is very unique and also background that's very unique that informs your opinions and gives an angle that I, I really enjoy. Send him the check right now, guys. He's doing great. But Barack, on a serious note, I very much appreciate that. Um, thank you for those kind words. We might hire you as our agent. Uh, but we need that right now because Barack, as you well know, not only are there a lot of haters, but even our quote unquote movement or the people on the right or conservatives, we're splintering constantly on every issue. Who wears the mask? Who doesn't? The, the, the potions that they try to introduce. Now the Israel palace, a Hamas thing, then Ukraine, where it, there's constant division, division, you know? So let's talk about that as well this evening. Um, and why I brought that up is we treasure and cherish any love and support that we get. Thank you, Barack. Um, so look, let's let's begin. Um, but maybe I didn't begin cor uh, not I began correctly, but not sufficiently. Tell the viewers a little bit more about your great self. Well, look, I, I'm first and foremost a father, uh, a second uh, lover of God uh, and all things uh, related to God. I, I want to push as much as I can the dangers of atheism in particular and how we must fight it in every turn that uh, atheism is such a destructive force. And it's not enough to say, well, you know, I believe in God and that's great. And you can not believe in God and that's great too. No, the, these people are actually advocating a very destructive force, whether they intend to or not, they are advocating that. Uh, just like if you were to advocate that you don't want to have uh, any seatbelts in cars, for example, you, you may be very honest and very sincere about it, but you're actually advocating a very dangerous proposition. And of course, atheism is way more dangerous than the, the lack of seatbelts in a car. So that is my main mission. Uh, I am also a lawyer. Um, I'm Jewish. I love Israel deeply. Uh, but my efforts all go, all go toward the destruction of atheism, as it were, and to really educate people about why we need God uh, as much as they may not want to go to church or synagogue or they don't want to put in the work. I get that. But there's a lot of things that we do that require work, uh, and you just have to do it. You have to brush your teeth. You have to exercise. You have to eat right. You have to sleep. You have to uh, you know, nurture your relationships. But th these are things you also have to nurture your relationship with God and understand why God is real. If you can't do that, you're you're really going uh, going to be living in a pattern of great depression uh, and no purpose in your life. So, uh, other than that, atheism is awesome. <laughs> so. I think that's my main uh, two cents about who I am, Jamie. 
you know, just our relationship with God that you uh, mentioned, just, just on, on a little note, just something that popped in my head. Remember this pastor very recently said to me, he said, would you come home and one of your favorite people is in the house and you wouldn't even acknowledge them? He said, you should talk to God all the time. And even when you come home and, you know, say hello and, and tell him about your day or give him respect. It's just, it's a very interesting way of putting it. Um, Barack, uh, your stance on atheism, <clears throat> we ran a couple of your videos Man, did that get a lot of people upset. It's very, very interesting, the, the nerve that you touched. Because I agree with you 100%, but when you were showing the flaws of atheism, the dangers of atheism, the connection of atheism with totalitarianism, wow, did that get a lot of people upset. It hit, it hit quite a nerve. And uh, perhaps we'll talk about that as well this evening. It's all very much connected, I think, to what we're seeing in front of our eyes right now. Um, Barack, I'm a little bit of a strange person that sometimes asks strange questions. Uh, but I think that they're actually just normal questions. You refer to yourself being Jewish. What is a Jew? <laughs> A Jew is somebody who uh, hails from the Israelite people and believes in the Torah, which uh, Christians call the Old Testament. We call it the Torah. We believe that God is, is real. We don't know what God looks like. Uh, there are a lot of things we don't know about the mysteries of God, but we do know only that he's good, that he wants us to be good to each other. And we are constantly looking for ways to improve our lives on the planet, uh, to be good to each other, as it were. Uh, and that's that's it. That's what a Jew really believes when it comes down to it. Uh, we, we say that uh, Judaism is the Ten Commandments and all the rest is commentary. Mm. Uh, but it, it's a beautiful thing. I, I love that about us. Um, we hold the world to, and ourselves to a higher standard. I think that's part of the reason why Jews are very often maligned is that, and I make this analogy, uh, we're, we're like that fourth grade kid that when the substitute teacher asks the class, you know, where we are in the class, and in this math uh, class, for example, uh, the, the Jewish kid uh, will say, yes, uh, you know, we're on chapter eight. We are studying fractions and decimals. Uh, everyone else wants to just play, and they, they claim that uh, the teacher lets them play. So that's the kind of mentality, I think, that uh, unfortunately the Jews have to deal with, it because we hold the world to a higher standard, uh, specifically the Ten Commandments, which should be simple, but in fact, they actually require work. Um, the good news is for us as Jews, you know, I consider Christians to be the new Jews in that sense, that they are now being maligned and uh, being chastised and despised because uh, they also hold the world to higher standard. Same mm -hmm. thing with America, for that matter. That's the reason why America is, is so despised at this point. We do hold the world to a higher standard, and this is why you can hear it in all the talk about and uh, about America being the world's policeman and how that's not appropriate uh, that who are you to impose your God on me and so on. Well, you know, the reality is that there is only one God and that's as simple as that. And he has his rules and there's only one truth. And this is very hard for people to accept. So you ask me, what is a Jew? That is what a Jew is. Uh, we believe in one God, one truth. Uh, it's the most important thing that we say is that God is one. And we repeat it over and over to ourselves to remind ourselves and also to understand that God is in everything that we do. Every success that you have, every failure that you have, every relationship that you have, God is, is part of that, and we should embrace it. Beautiful words and sacred words, Barack, and this is central to, and I keep saying the, the discussion that we will have, but the way that you and I talk, we're never going to get to some of those issues, perhaps, but just recently, as I'm watching everything happening, and it's surreal, and it's demonic, and the hatred of the Jewish people, and of course of Christians, but just one topic at a time. But I was thinking right now, just watching what's happening on the campuses, and we see it rising. And I've devoted my life to trying to understand, just even in my work, United in Hate, the more that the communists killed people, the more that the left worshipped them and worships them. And it's coming for a circle because when jihad starts to kill, the left comes into ecstasy and goes into ecstasy. And now what happened on October 7th and the left is all in ecstasy again. 
It's, it's a demonic uh, circle. But one of the layers here is how much people hate. There's so much envy and jealousy here because there's a hatred of the chosen people. And so let and 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 you've always fascinated me. And by the way, I just I love the way you describe things, Barack, because I want to bring up a little bit of how we see things as Christians. And I always feel so comfortable with you. You're one of you're you're a Jewish person that is always so loving and accommodating in the sense of that one can have such a just an open and free discussion with you. And I and I very it just even when we have a kind of an interfaith dialogue. And I very much appreciate that. So, let, and I remember one time on one of my programs and just in our conversations, you were emphasizing just the misunderstandings there are too. It's not that Jews are like, we're chosen, we're special. No, it also comes with a lot of hardship and obligation. Right. It doesn't necessarily mean you're, that they're superior and better. No, but... But God has a mission for the Jewish people. He has missions for other people. But with the Jewish people, he gave, there's certain missions. And for us Christians, it's a little bit different. On some layers, Jews are part of the, the, the narrative of salvation because Jesus Christ came through the Jews and will return also through the Jewish narrative. So Christians see this obviously a little bit different, but we still conflate on a lot of issues here. Um, and But I wanted to say that I remember reading and studying this and it, just a light bulb went on, on in my head because what you were describing. Part of the mission here is that God chose the Jewish people to relay his law. And a lot of humans don't like conscience. And, and, and a lot of scholars have pointed out that a large segment of anti-Semitism stems from people's hatred of the Jewish people for giving them conscience. Because when, pe when people want to do what they want to do, they don't like shame. They don't like guilt. They want to do what they want to do. And in many respects, as we know, this is the left as well. They want to pat on the back for living the way they want to live that might not be right, right? But this is all interconnected with what I hope we'll get to in a minute. But let's talk about that for a minute, that, that when I ask you, what is a Jewish person? It's not just me being flippant or silly. This is central here because what is anti-Semitism? Why right now are there these 20-year-olds that don't know anything screaming with rage and repeating Allahu Akbar on a university campus with some guy that supports Hamas telling them to scream it? Well, because, the, because there's somewhere in many people a hatred of Jews. And, yes. and the Jews were given an assignment by our father. And part of it is to give the law. Um, could you talk a little bit about what I just talked about? Well, I, I, I love this topic because it really does show the conflation. You use that word, and I think it's right. It, it, it's a really a perfect storm, as it were. The, this situation is a perfect storm that brings out all the worst parts of human beings uh, when it comes to this particular issue. I'm talking about the Hamas-Israel uh, conflict that's going on right now, the, the war. Okay, so let's take it apart. The first part is what we talked about before, that there's a, this appeal to the sense of Jews uh, have been telling us how to live, and who are they to tell us how to live? Uh, we don't need that accountability. We don't want anyone to tell us uh, how to behave one way or the other. Well, okay, <laughs> that that's that is a very big issue. That's the. I, I'm so sorry for talking too much. I just wanted to interrupt just for a, a, a second. But that's also such a slander and libel against the Jewish people because, on so many on so many levels, they hold themselves up to a higher standard, and don't expect it of other people. I have so many Jewish friends that are like, "Oh, I gotta eat like this." 
and then I can't do this on a Friday night. And sometimes in a very humble way, they're not even judging me. They're just saying that that's what they have to do. Uh, but go ahead. That, that's exactly right. We we never will judge a Christian yeah. uh, like self, for example, for eating shrimp or pork or right. in a combination with dairy. I mean, it, it is what it is. And it's just that it's a standard that we hold ourselves to. And we believe that it's an exercise of our free will. It's it's a, it's a gift when you restrict yourself uh, in these limited sort of ways. But that's another story. And the fact is that that uh, many people resent Jews because they feel like Jews are telling them how to live. But it's it's more than that in a sense that it, we, we are a reminder of the concept of accountability. Mm. People don't want to be accountable. You said it very well, Jamie. They, they want to live their very bizarre lifestyles. They want to be able to sex it up and booze it up and steal if they want to and lie if they want to. Uh, there, there are very strange new uh, patterns developing, these things called polycules. Uh, there's also polygamy, uh, the talk of polygamy and such, and all sorts of strange new sexual antics that people have. It, it would lead to the destruction of civilization as we know it. And although we don't think of it uh, that way, but it would. And that's why, uh, in many ways, they really resent uh, Judaism. They uh, resent Christians for the same reason. It's, it's telling them that they need to be accountable and, and they don't want to be accountable. They just want to do their own thing. They don't want, they want a no judgment rule in life altogether. They don't want any shame. As you said, they want all the honor, but they don't want any of the shame and mm -hmm. you can't have uh, shame without honor and vice versa. So that, that is a big problem. So uh, another thing that this is running to, this is, I told you, this is a perfect storm. We've got a, a culture now, especially among the young people who know absolutely nothing about history. Uh, and they, at the same time, they, they want purpose. Everyone needs purpose. And they've been given zero purpose in all of their lives. They've been, they've been told to just go forward and, and have a lot of relationships, a lot of sex, like I said, uh, just have a lot of fun all the way through. It just gets whatever money you can from everybody else. Expect the government to give you that money. And and then all of a sudden, uh, they and they don't do anything with their lives. They don't necessarily get good jobs. They're not really motivated to do anything. This is it's a failure to launch generation. You know about this. Uh, we have the highest suicide culture. We have the highest depression culture. It's it's just awful, especially among young men. So and people are not having kids. I, we could talk about that all day long. And here comes all of a sudden out of the blue, this moment in the sun where they they are told that here is your meaning. This, this Israel Hamas package, take it, run with it. We're, we will tell you what to say. And, the, and there are nice rhyming phrases like from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, right? Uh, and, and they tell them that it's a genocide. They tell, you know, who's, who's for genocide, right? Uh, they, they're, they tell them that Israel is uh, an apartheid nation. Well, who's for apartheid, right? But, but they've been told this by smart people uh, or who they thought were smart people, and they just echo it over and over again. And what's really going on, of course, that, is that a lot of Arab countries, a lot of Muslim influence, is uh, funding these demonstrations, and for that matter, funding universities with all sorts of academic programs and departments, telling uh, the, the kids, and there really are kids when you think about it, how to think about this. And if they do advance this, then they will be lauded as important, as significant, that's what's going on. So these are the three things that are all dovetailing together in a perfect storm and, and why we have so many people out there doing pretty crazy things. And that's why also, Jamie, you know, you may get the sense that you can argue with them all day long and there's this, this appeal to logic, right? And appeal to history. Well, did, did you actually know that Israel is the only democracy? Do you actually know that Israel is as small as, as, small as New Jersey and, and has a population of only 7 million? And and 20% of the population is Arab and, uh, and many other cultures and such. You can argue all day long with them. You can show them pictures of how, uh, in fact, awesome Israel is, that it's the best place for women, it's the best place for gays, the best place for, for minorities. You can show all of that, and they don't want to hear it. And the reason why they don't want to hear it, Jamie, is very simple. It flies in the face of what they want to believe very desperately. And the community that they need to belong to. That's right. If if you were to show them that Israel is actually a great country, that it is a light on, on, on to nations, it, you would take away their very purpose that they have signed themselves onto. Yeah. 
Yes. And and that they can't abide. It, it's just yes. too devastating for them. Anyway, that that's what explains to me everything that they go. It, it will never change their minds. It's not about Absolutely. changing. It's, it's about understanding what's happening. Yeah. Absolutely, Barack. Because to change their mind, they would have to make the step that David Horowitz made, that Phyllis Chesler made, that the second thoughters made, and then in the earlier generation, the book that God that failed, because leaving the left and leaving that cult, boy, does that come with a lot, a lot of threats. And right now they think they're so brave. There's just, you know, tens of thousands of them chanting, and they're so brave. No, I'll tell you what brave is. Take an Israeli flag and go over there, just a little bit away from the demonstration and stand there. That's what's brave. See what happens to you. They pretend that they're brave. They think they're brave, but they're in a huge, violent crowd. And they know deep down what will happen to them if they cross the party line. And, and Barack, uh, let me say this for a second, that just, I know we also have a little bit different conceptions of Satan and evil, but again, we conflate on a lot of realms as Christians, uh, just the evil that we, and, you know, for us and just for my beliefs, Satan, he's not always just coming with the horns and the pitchfork. You know, he comes in these, sometimes he comes in an angel, is, is, is dressed as an angel, but just a little bit blurred. And other times it's just complete perversion. And not even necessarily in a sexual way, but it's just sick and perverted. And right now, what, 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 a, what a leftist narrative. A drag queen in some public library, just watch the video today, and the drag queen is teaching the little kids to chant Free Palestine. I mean, you can't get much more surreal and eerily haunting. Um, yeah. Where do we even start? Uh, first of all, this drag queen would last one and a half seconds in Free Palestine. Um, but just what they're teaching the kids, it's just crazy. But this is a... It's a reflection of a lost generation. This is your theme, your book, Keeping the Kids All Right. But you talk about this. You're an expert on this. Uh, this generation is completely lost. And, and the left has succeeded in taking it down the direction of being lost. Just expand on that a little bit. Yeah, look, it's, it's, they've tempted the, this generation in the same way that you could tempt a, let's say a very fat person who really needs to get off of his butt and exercise a little bit more and of course eat a lot less. And he's convinced that the reason why he's fat is because of some sort of pituitary issue and that he just can't help it. It's Ooh. it's glandular or what, all those words. You know what, That it, it might be a factor of it, but the reality is he needs to exercise, at least try to exercise. But that involves work. We all know that, right? And now, for them to understand the concepts of truth and what makes a meaningful life, that involves work too. That, that means understanding American history. That uh, means understanding the reality of God. It means understanding the nonsense of other social issues such as climate change slash global warming and of course transgenderism. It, it, that's what it means. It means you have to unravel these things and be cynical and uh, really have, engage in dramatic critical thinking and rolling up your sleeves. So that anytime you're you're encouraging work for anybody and that there's a concept of shame and honor, like we talked about before, uh, then you're going to run afoul of, of very loud groups. But you just got to keep on pushing. Look, I, I have a speak about bravery. I don't know how brave I am, but I, I have a shirt, a T-shirt. It's one of my favorite ones, very comfortable. It's a big old honking Israeli flag on top of it. You can't miss it. It's huge. And I'm very happy to walk around everywhere, even in Los Angeles with that shirt. And I, I have to say that uh, very few people have actually mocked me or attacked me. Um, most people give me the thumbs up about it. I think what we're dealing with is a very um, passively violent group of people that talk a lot of talk when they're in a big group, but they don't know how to say or how to speak up about anything. 
when it comes to the reality of, an, of a one-on-one. -on -one. But Barack, I don't, my sense is that that's not going to be safe much longer, what you're doing. Um, I, I see a crystal knocked happening in America, and uh, I think that this is going to be ex escalating. Yeah, when I was in college, I remember a long time ago, uh, I think it was my senior year in college, we had a Holocaust survivor come to us, and he was very interesting. And and somebody asked him, do you think that a Holocaust could ever happen uh, in America? And he, his answer was a good one, where he said, look, I, I don't think so, because there are too many other groups that would stand up for the Jews or for this or that minority group mm -hmm. uh, so that, they, that, that could not possibly happen. There would be too much resistance and pushback. But Jamie, I don't, I don't know anymore. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it, you would think that uh, the black community, the transgender <laughs> community, for that matter, that the gay community and so many other communities would be out there saying, "This dog don't hunt." When it comes to this anti-Semitism business, this yeah. is not. Uh, but we're not seeing that. Uh, on the contrary, we're seeing a, a decided lack of appreciation yeah. of gifts of the Jews uh, and the involvement of the Jews in the civil rights era and so on. So I, I, you might be right. We might see a crystal knocked. Well, Barack, um, if my memory is correct, this um, brave individual professor, Jewish fellow, Shy, he just had his ID uh, deactivated. He couldn't get on one of the campuses. I think it was Columbia or NYU. I'm not sure which one of the campuses it was at this moment. But that's actually happening. They're not letting um, Jews on in certain segments of campus that is uh, that is true and uh, the, the the universities are saying that somehow it's for the safety of yeah. the jewish professors or the students as the case may be which is very insulting in many ways because they would never tolerate this if this were let's say a single black person uh in a fairly major you know white majority college um they would not say well you know what you, you can't come on comp campus for your own safety i mean that would be outrageous and and rightfully so uh, that the university needs to stand up. And what's really going on here is that the university is afraid of its own students. They themselves uh, are, are afraid of this concept of standards or accountability. They don't even know why they would be fighting for accountability and standards at all. So they, they themselves don't believe in God. They don't believe in America. So why would they start standing up against these uh, Jewish activist groups, which are against America, against Jews, against uh, Western civilization for that matter. It's very hard to get somebody very passionate about fighting against these things when they don't even know why why they themselves uh, stand for these things. That's what's happening in Colombia and otherwise. Yeah, there's another video of, uh, <laughs> I watched it today, they're interviewing these two students at this demonstration on campus and they go, so what are you demonstrating about? Why are you here? And she goes, oh, I'm, I'm, I wish I was more educated. What are we here for again? And uh, uh, well, this, this is that cult. And, you know, I, I'm always kind of interested also in how the revolutions eat their children. Because who, yes. who did the Bolsheviks put up against the wall first? It was the Russian liberals that supported the the revolution, and you know when 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 we know when what's then Stalin killed the Bolsheviks, and then the Yagodas killed the Yagodas. A Yagoda was an executioner, for our audience, those that don't know, uh, in the Stalinist years, and uh, then Yagodas ultimately tortured and, and executed. Uh, you know we know Beria was executed, so then. That's what happened with the Maoist Cultural Revolution, with Castro. And, you know, I watch it here too, you know. Uh, it's interesting even some leftist personalities right now that at least have the courage and integrity to at least stand for Israel. But now they're getting it. They've been leftists all this time. But all of a sudden they crossed the party line and now the mob is coming for them. I know so many people in my own lives, and I remember over the years, you know, they would be telling me, oh, Trump is this, and you're this, and you're this. And I'm just like, mm, yeah, because I know their time will come. I know some people in the university, and they're leftists, and then all of a sudden, they're not the right color. All of a sudden, they use the wrong pronoun. There's a certain friend of mine in academia Leftist all of his life, but now terrified to go teach class because 
there's a problem with a trans student and now the mob is coming. The mob will come and get you. The mob will come and get you. And it's happening right now on many levels, isn't it? It is. And, and in the history of the world, the mob has never been appeased. Yeah. <laughs> it's very important to remember that. The mob has never been and will never be appeased. I mean, one of my favorite uh, scenes in a movie was the movie um, Argo, when they're describing mm. the situation in, with the hostage taking uh, in Iran. And you see this one American embassy official, uh, the bunch of mob is is, is coming out and uh, they're, they're banging on the doors and they're demanding uh, people to open the doors. And so one guy says, he starts opening the door and they say, what are you doing? And he says, I'm going to reason with them. <laughs> and then within 10 seconds, he's now taken as a hostage himself. You know, of course, yeah. it's nonsensical. You will never reason with the mob. You need to be very, uh, very, yeah. very enforcing, enforcing of the law uh, when it comes to the mob. You cannot appease them in any way, shape or form. You yeah. cannot accommodate them. You must arrest them. This is what's happening in Florida, thankfully. This is what's happening in Texas right now. Yeah. And there is this sort of madness where they're blocking bridges and otherwise taking over um, government buildings and such. The, the, Florida and Texas are arresting these people. And surprise, surprise, it's just not happening as much anymore. When, yeah. when you people that it's okay to not enforce the law because of their particular political belief or, or international belief like in, about Israel, then you're, you're giving them oxygen to the fire you, you just can't do that uh, and it will just get worse and worse uh, to the point where all of a sudden just being jewish alone uh, will be a crime in the eyes of many of these protesters uh, having any sort of affiliation with israel alone will be a crime so god forbid this all happens uh, god yeah. you know willing uh trump will be elected in november and i really mean god willing because it has to happen if yeah. we we have biden uh, re-elected somehow uh, the trouble really will start brewing much faster, and they will feel emboldened by by all of this that somehow America is behind them. So anti-Semitism will rise dramatically. Anti-Israelism, yeah. and for that matter, anti-Americanism. It's mm -hmm. a very dangerous time right now. Very dangerous time. Thank you for your golden words, and uh, our program could not continue without our supporters and sponsors. We're going to take a quick sponsor break. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back, the my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, my pillow 2.0. <gasps> wow, it's so soft and smooth. It's cool to the touch. How did you do that? Well, we took my pillow's patented bill and combined it with this new technology that we didn't have back then when I invented my pillow to bring you the best pillow in history, MyPillow 2.0. Just like all of you, I never imagined that MyPillow could get any better. That's why I haven't changed it in nearly 20 years. Then I heard about a revolutionary new technology and I knew I had to bring it to you all. MyPillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of MyPillow. The MyPillow 2.0 is cooler and softer than the last MyPillow. It is so comfortable to sleep on at night. I look forward to going to bed and I wake up well rested in the morning. Sleep is all about temperature and height. My Pillow 2.0's patented adjustable fill is gonna give you the exact individual support you need from your head to your bed. And now here's where it gets even better. We've all experienced those temperature related sleep interruptions where you get too hot, you toss and turn, you flip your pillow over to the cool side, well, all that's gone with my brand new MyPillow 2.0 cooling fabric that's made with temperature regulating thread. The best sleep just got even better. Whether you have a MyPillow or not, you need to get the brand new MyPillow 2.0. Call or go to MyPillow.com now. Use your promo code and for a limited time when you buy one, you'll get a second one absolutely free. You're sleeping even better. And cooler too. And you're looking good. Feeling good. I knew you would. Visit MyPillow.com. And that's right. Make sure to go to MyPillow.com or MyStore.com and use promo code GG21. And you can get a discount of up to 60% off on all the amazing products. You're going to be helping out Mike Lindell and, of course, the Glazoff gang. And if you like one-of-a-kind handmade art, make sure to go to LUTFStudio.com and purchase resin art pieces 
made by the one and only Annie Cyrus. And you can use promo code GLASSOFF to get special discounts. You got to make sure to give a hand to Annie because she's fighting a very noble fight. And we are back with the one and only Barack Lurie. Do you have a good pillow at home, Barack? I do. I've got the my pillows. I've just re reordered some as well. Okay, okay. And why don't you add an extra word? You you've been sleeping great with my pillow, haven't you? I have. I have. And it's funny, I'm I'm actually away on vacation and I do not have a my pillow that I'm sleeping here in, in this uh location. And it's uh the sleep is not as good. I have to tell you, it's um I'm comparing easily and it's uh my pillow really does a trick. <laughs> you know, we're gonna have to Andy, make sure to get a clip of what he just said. We got to use that on our next sponsor. Ad. That's fantastic, Barack. Um, I want to get to some of these arguments about Israel. Uh, because, and, and as you say, it doesn't matter what you are, because the arguments are so plain as day. And it's so easy with anybody with moral clarity to say who the good and bad guy is. But with a lot of these uh, members of the leftist cult, or the, or the cult of the unholy alliance. That's the alliance between the left and jihad, but they're blurring closer and closer together. This is my, dedic my dedicate the dedication of my life is, is studying this, and my book, United in Hate, deals with it. I got to do an updated on, version on it. But that, that book is fantastic, Jamie. Yeah, you, you really captured something there. I recommend it to everybody. I, when, I, when people ask me what books to read, that is... On one of the top five that I, I recommend. Brock, what is your day job? I, I think Annie and I got to hire you. This is, uh, I've never gotten so many compliments in, in 45 minutes. Thank you, Barack. And, but you can't, and, but one of the things I was also dedicated to is understanding why they can't agree. You know, why they, they can't, you know, and you've talked about this, but it's fascinating. Just off the top of my head, I remember this one lady once goes to me, you like Donald Trump. How can you like Donald Trump? And I remember I said to her, no matter how much I explain it to you, won't, you can't leave your community because if you agree with me, you're not going to have any friends left in that community. Right. You will be excommunicated at the least. Yeah. And, and Barack, you're a stand-up guy and you went through certain... Uh, roads in your life and you don't care you're going to stand for what you think is right these people don't like you oh you're out of that circle that's okay me too i was a conservative on the university campus you know what it was like to be in a graduate student's lounge as a grad student being known as the reaganite it's okay i got my own friends i got my own things to do but that's but people are terrified and so when we give them these arguments it's just going to go in one ear and out the other but it's so clear. So let's begin on a couple of them. Okay. October 7th happens. A million dark, barbaric, vicious things happen. With babies being put on ovens and children being raped in front of their parents and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now the world is cheering on the people that did it. Hmm, interesting. What a pathological time. Now... And now people are saying that the Israelis are engaged in genocide. Okay, so just even to start with, one side is hiding under hospitals because they know that the people they're fighting don't want to bomb the hospitals. So one side is intentionally killing children and humans. The other side doesn't want to kill people. So there's a difference between deliberate killing and then the tragedy of war where there's inadvertent killing. Israel is the most moral army in the world in terms of how it's confronting terrorism. Let me give you the stage for that. Well, you set it up so nicely, and I, and I of course, agree with that. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the moral standing as well in a moment. But look, the, the fact that they are hiding uh, their in, in, innocent, and I'll put that in air quotes for the time being, uh, civilians under hospitals and such, and, and wanting the Israelis to do this means exactly that the people believing that are playing right into 
the game plan that Hamas is now you know, executing for them. They they want the Israelis to do this so that they can do it. They know that uh, Israel is reluctant to do these things. And so any uh, occasion of loss of life of a civilian is going to be uh, thrown into the into the, the presses and you won't be able to argue against it. That's the idea. It, but let's let's take it the other way. Let's say for the sake of discussion that Israel truly wanted to be a genocidal nation and wanted to commit ge genocide against the Palestinians. So, okay, well, you know what? They could have done that within two hours. They could have completely obliterated all of Gaza. They have the capacity to do it and they don't do it. That That should provide some sort of cognitive dissonance for anybody that supports Hamas or otherwise, more particularly, believes that Israel is a genocidal country. If they're genocidal, then why aren't they acting like a genocidal country? They're not. It's It would be so easy. If the Nazis wanted to pulverize, if all the Jews were in a place at the similar size of Gaza, the Nazis would just completely obliterate all of Gaza. They wouldn't tiptoe around it, trying to get only the bad guys one by one and inadvertently hitting a civilian from time to time. That's what would happen. But it's an absurd uh, argument, but they want to hold on to it for the reasons we talked about, because it makes them feel morally superior, that they are that they have purpose in their lives. Now, going to the moral part of that, that you just mentioned, you're 100% right. In, in addition to warning the Palestinians about the fact that they're about to attack a particular building and giving them uh, humanitarian uh, avenues or corridors by which they can escape the conflict, uh, that, that itself shows the humanitarian side of, of Israel. In addition to the fact that the Palestinians want to keep the civilians in Gaza so that they can have as high a body count as possible. This is the cynical approach that, that Hamas is always engaged in. Another thing to note is that Israel has the lowest um, a combatant to civilian casualty rate in the world, uh, meaning that, or I should say civilian to, to combatant to civilian ratio, because th this means that they, for every soldier that is killed, I mean, a Hamas a militant or a terrorist, that there are so many uh, civilians who are killed. That ratio is the best in the world for any urban fighting, as we've seen right now. And they go out of their way, as I said, to, to drop leaflets and otherwise warn. They have what they call knock-knock bombs ahead of time to really tell people, even if they didn't get the leaflets, we're going to blow this building up. You have about 10 minutes to get out, go. What other country does that? It's never happened in the history of the world, but because it is Israel, because uh, it's a country run by Jews and it's a Jewish nation, uh, then there's a huge microscope that is uh, employed against uh, Israel and the scrutiny is beyond belief. There's nothing that Israel can do to satisfy the mob. Um, and all they can see is that they've got purpose in their lives by attacking Israel. That's what's, that, that explains everything that you're seeing in Israel right now, even despite what happened on October 7. Thank you, Barack. As Jews and Christians, we know what is promised in for us, the Old Testament, for you, the, the Torah in the New Testament, but there was the promise to Abraham, who blesses you, I will bless. And then in so many other sections, the importance of supporting Israel. And, um, you know, there's, there's quite a miraculous narrative in Nixon's life. When Nixon was young, I think it was his grandmom. I don't know exactly the details. It was either his grandmom or mom, but she was a bit of a visionary. And she said to him, there will come a day in your life where you will have to help Israel. Make sure you do it. This is, it's just an incredible story. And then when he was, and then when he was the president, during a certain moment, he got a call from a Jewish leader who asked for help and he did it during that war. It's an incredible story. Why I'm bringing that up is, I think, no, it's not the first time. We know that Barack Obama betrayed Israel, and we know certain things in the past about betrayal. But right now, at this key moment, this key moment, America is supporting blatantly a terrorist entity 
over a democracy. This is just, uh, I mean, disgusting is one word, but for me, there's a spiritual context. I, I see a certain demonic realm here with Biden. Uh, let me give it to you. This is just, uh, I would call it a demonic disgrace, what's happening with Biden and Blinken. Yeah, it is demonic. Uh, it is terrifying to to see it. It's, it's also a, a question of caving in to evil. Evil, as as we've mentioned, is is the lazy way out. It's uh, it's the appeal to you, your most prurient interests, to your most lazy instincts, and to the desire to get the most out of your fellow man without giving back to your fellow man. That's that's what it is. Uh, evil is always about the ignorance of what it takes to do good. It, it was interesting what you said about uh, those that you'll bless will be blessed, and those who you curse will be cursed, uh, and which is very true. But for people to know that, they would actually have to know history and have to see that they are standing a long line of, of morons who uh, were anti-Semites or anti-Israel, uh, who indeed turn out to have horrific uh, lives and loss and consequences to their empires and to their careers or otherwise. Those who go against uh, Judaism, for example, Roger Waters is a very good example. Uh, they, they tend to, their, their careers tend to collapse after a very short while. And it's not because the Jews are out to destroy Roger Waters. It's, it's, it's the God destroys Roger Waters. Same thing with the empires, uh, whether it's uh, Hitler and the Nazis or the Babylonians or um, the Egyptians and, and the Romans and the Greeks. All those empires failed uh, because, uh, in large part, because they, they did not embrace their Jews. That's that's a, a fact. And if you know that as a historical fact, then you say, well, maybe I ought not to repeat that silly, horrific mistake uh, for my, for, in my own personal life and for that matter of geopolitics. But they don't know these things because they don't know the slightest thing about history. They, we, we laugh, you and I, Jamie, about how most people don't even know when America declared independence. They don't even know from which country we declared independence. I mean, it's, it's really fascinating. I, I often give them a clue. I say, you know, we do speak English <laughs> and they don't know. But then to, to expect them to know anything about the biblical history, and that's another thing altogether. They, they cannot abide. They have no idea. They, they think it's uh, religion retards civilization and progressivism, and therefore they want to abandon it. They, they got everything completely reversed. Jamie, I know this because when I... When I was doing my thesis uh, in college, I I wanted to prove that religion was the greatest cause for destruction and mayhem and murders and slaughters and rapes and everything else uh, than than anything else ever uh, the history ever came up with. I wanted to prove it because I was an atheist at the time. Well, I did my research and I and I thought, what better way to prove it than to show the numbers? And so as I was digging through, I realized very quickly. I was quite wrong. I was. I had it exactly the reverse, and suddenly I found myself to really be championing not only Judaism but also Christianity because Christianity is a force for incredible good. Um, as you know, I, I believe that very fiercely in my heart. I think Christian uh, Christian history has really been distorted, um, even with respect to some of the anti-Semitism that happened in, within the church. I, and, and there was that's true, but they make it seem as if somehow Christianity that its entire focus was uh, anti-Semitism, and it's just not true. Uh, yeah. There were bad blips in, in Christian history, but a lot of it was not nothing to do with the church, one way or the other. Yeah. Just some of the actors yeah. claimed to do so. So we, we have a lot more in common, yeah. uh, Jews and Christians, and then we have differences. And we have a huge a chasm between Jews and Christians on the one hand, and our belief in the one God, and atheists on the other. Oh, and what the Bolsheviks succeeded in doing when they got rid of the Ten Commandments. Mm. Yeah. Barack, I, w I wish we had another hour. Um, just wanted to say there for a minute, we know as Christians and Jews, there's going to be a period, well, we disagree, of course, on some perspectives, but there's going to be a period of, there's going to be a period of fire and blood in the sense of our suffering. And it's going to get bad. But we still dance in the streets because for us, Jesus Christ is coming. For you, Mashiach is coming. And we win. And if they, 
if they th he's not, the Lord is not going to let Israel fall to the people that hate the creator. And maybe this is for another show, but wow, when I study the miracles during uh, the, the wars in 67, 73, so many, some Israeli soldiers are saying, I was by myself with this other soldier and there was uh, 200,000 of them and then they turned away and ran away. And the people on the other side were saying, well, we saw a million Israeli tanks, but those tanks weren't there. Uh, there's just- My father, by the way, I just want to say this. My father was a major in the Israeli army in the, during the Six Day War, and that's exactly what happened. He and uh, four of his other men, he was the leader of it. Uh, he, he saw a battalion of, of Jordanian soldiers. He was huge. And uh, he charged them because they had no choice but to charge. And something about the dust behind them or whatever made the Jordanians think that it was a huge group of, uh, the, the entire Israeli army was behind them and they all surrendered uh, to approximately five men. And uh, that was just one example of, of what you're talking about. Many miracles uh, in the Israeli uh, military history as it should be. And, and God definitely is watching over not only Israel, but America. Jimmy, if I could say one more thing about, about uh, atheism. And this is such an important part, and I know you believe. But but please finish with how great the Glazov gang is and stuff like that. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I, um, Go ahead. Go you ahead. Know, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, uh, that great dis dissident from the former Soviet Union days, and I know you know him really well. He, he's such a brave man. Uh, wrote the, the Gulag Archipelago and many other great books. Uh, One day in the life of Ivan Denisovich. He. He began to see the evils of the Soviet Union and communism, generally speaking. And he he said the most poignant and most important thing I've ever heard when it comes to atheism. He said the atheism was not just a tenet of communism, but it was the central tenet mm. of communism. Mm. They had to destroy the Ten Commandments. That's mm. what they were. And everything flowed from there. I think that's a perfect ending tonight because what we see is a rebellion against our creator and one of that one of the components of that rebellion is to kill his messengers and the land that is supposed to be the land of the group of people that he assigned a very special mission to yeah that's right barack lurie all good things must come to an end including a discussion with you I just sense that you want to say something a little bit extra. Our time is over, but just give us one minute words of wisdom and tell our viewers where they can come and check out all your work. Well, I appreciate it. I, I was going to say how, how thankful I am to the Glass Up gang. It's, <laughs> look, I, I've watched a lot of your videos before and I always learn something. And uh, I, I often I echo so much of what you say, Jamie. There's a lot of brilliance in what you have to say. And I I really do encourage your listeners to please contribute to the Glasgow gang. I know that I will as well, uh, because we need this voice. Uh, I appreciate that. I was kind of kidding with you, but Barack, you think you're echoing me, but I'm actually a fan of yours and echoing you. So it's very hard to know who's echoing who. Maybe it's maybe it's both of us. You're kind enough to to say where where they can find my work. Uh, you know, my my latest book is uh, "Keeping the Kids All Right: How to Make Sure That Your Kids Never Fall for the Woke Agenda." That's so important to a lot of parents today. That to me, it's a very big mission that I have because it all starts with the children, right? What we need is a a, a new generation that understands the reality of God, understands the goodness of America and Israel, and understands. What, what a nonsensical argument is, such as with climate change and with the transgenderism nonsense. And you just got to get to them early. Anyway, my new book uh, addresses exactly how to do that. And it makes it super easy and super fun. Uh, it's a guarantee. My book, if you follow it, it's a guarantee that your kids will never go woke and that they will want to have kids of their own one day and that they themselves will also teach their kids the same thing. You'll be in, a, in good standing there. And get my awesome. other books, uh, all my Atheism Kills series. It's uh, about the dangers of atheism. I cannot stress this enough. You have to fight atheism. It's not just enough to love God. You really have to hate evil. It's commanded by us, by the Torah. And now we're seeing exactly why, isn't it? What a great ending. And uh, at, to, to the program, I mean, with your wisdom. But there's always, Barack, you have a special light 
around you and a, a, there's a spark there and it's it's always amazing what comes from the second thoughters not the people that were born into certain ideas and always had them but people that were a little bit in the belly of the beast and came out they have a special very special message for us and i think you're one of them right i i hope so i yeah. i know what atheism is like i know what uh yeah. the mindset of that it's a very dangerous very destructive force yeah. so, yeah. so i i was blessed in a way to have been gone down that belly of the beast as you say yeah. and discovered the reality barack you are a very special person um i would say a hero a very noble man a brave man on the front lines telling the truth fighting against evil thank you for everything that you do you're very kind and thank you so much jamie really appreciate the time we hope to see you back on the glasoff gang very soon thank you barack an honor Ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our Rumble channel. Help us out at jamieglazoff.com. Visit any site, liveuptofreedom.com. And check out Barack Lurie and everything he's doing. We'll see you soon on the Glazoff Gang. Good night.